time to introduce our first speaker, Sonia Manchanda. Sonia is a founding partner at Spread, a global practice with expertise in design, media, and technology. She has set up the Design Barn, India's first independent facility to bridge the design and innovation gap. And Design Barn is a place where we are going to have the design days in person even tomorrow. Sonia's award-winning open innovation and design strategy project, Dream In, was a movement across the world to shift the focus of design from needs to dreams. She's a member of many boards, including the India Design Council, CII Design Council, and the incubator called Forge. Sonia's work and featured in books, Do Better With Less, and Creative Intelligence, just to name a few. We are excited to have her here. Welcome, Sonia. Over to you. Hi, guys. Nice to see you all. And even more excited to have you over tomorrow. Um, I'm just going to share my presentation. And I'm going to challenge you a little bit over here. Can you see my screen? OK, great. So I'm going to say that, you know, um, it's a challenge, really, that if you don't dare, you lose yourself. Because to dare is to lose your footing momentarily. To not dare is to lose yourself. So I'm going to argue that design is a very, very powerful capacity. And sometimes we as designers, we don't recognize it in ourselves, in our profession. It's a powerful capacity to not just take a swipe at change. You know, it's not just, okay, I'm going to experiment, do something nice. But it's a very powerful capacity to actually recognize and deeply understand flux and help others understand flux. You know, it's also a capacity to be able to flex your cognitive muscles. It's only in design that we have the tools to recognize and make change happen. I'm sure you would agree with that, isn't it? And then it is also the capacity and the capability to flow, to flow with powerful ideas and actions. It's not just ideas, you, you, you act. You know, and you make things happen on ground. And I think more and more now, the time has come for us to design, act, not react, but react. And to make design our natural adaptive sense. When I say our, I mean that let's take it out there. Let's take it to governance. Let's take it to industry. Let's take it to behavior change. Let's take it to everything. You know, much like every little creature out there, outside my house, there is, I live on a little farm and there's a little, there's this chameleon family and they change colors every day. You know, they adapt every day. We are much smarter than that, right? We also have the capacity to actually adapt to what's going on. And, you know, adversity is the time for creativity. And there's no time like now um, to make design a natural adaptive sense. Um, but first, you can't just jump into things and fall apart and be, you know, lying there in pieces. So first, you have to design for resilience. How do you design for resilience? I can only tell you from my experience, right? There's no point in, you know, just speaking in the abstract. So from my experience, um, what I realized that what you need to do is you need to first create the space. Create the space to open up, to accept challenges to actually uh, surround yourself with people, with processes, with tools, and to design your env environment for resilience. Two things I've done, and I'm going to talk about one of them. Um, and the other one, you'll have to come and I'll have to take you there. Because it's a farm which we started growing about 18, 20 years ago, which is a little forest now. Uh, we wanted to uh, be off the grid and we want it to be the change that we want we tell others about but i'm not going to talk about it i'm going to talk about the design barn where you're going to visit tomorrow um an open space and a canvas to say that you know you have to be frugal you have to be flexible and you have to design your own environment first design it for resilience make it playful make it adaptive and then of course um uh, in my experience i've had the opportunity um and the challenge to design three design organizations. And I'm hoping this is the last one I designed. And now within this um, uh, post the three horizons, what we've really done is created a system 
And that system has strategy, it has design, it has digital, it has filmed. These four pillars and four strong leaders who will lead us to be able to get to work on anything really, on any challenge. Um, so first we've designed ourselves to be able to then allow industry governance, et cetera, to look at design as this powerful force that can create change. And what does that mean? It means to be able to respond, to take responsibility, to take responsibility, to have responsibility, to respond to things as they come at you. You can't say, okay, wait, you know, I'm going to go, I'll come back a little bit later. That's not going to happen, right? So we need to be able to respond. We need to be able to reboot like a system. Don't have fixed ways of thinking about ourselves, about our own capacities and about the world. I'll show you a little bit from example of what, how, how we've been challenged. My team and I at Spread, we've been challenged all the time to have to reboot and rethink about who we are if we want to go support industry and governance. Reframe. This is the greatest capability we have where others see problems, entrepreneurs and designers see opportunity. We see every challenge as an opportunity. There's just a mindset that we need to have, an attitude that we need to have, a spirit we need to have. We know that there are no real failures. You make something, if it doesn't work, that's just a prototype. You remake. You make a dosa, doesn't come out right, doesn't matter. You make another one, right? So you just remake. You remake anything. You make things that make change visible. And then you can make on top of that, you can make something else. You reshape. When I say reshape, what I really mean is that make while making is about creating a prototype that sort of works, even if it's a jugaad, can be refined later. The shaping is that of systems, of getting all stakeholders in, of recognizing that people are a very integral part of change and you need to work with them. We are not alone, especially not in India. We are never alone. There are people around us all the time. So let's work with these people. So reshape systems which involve diverse stakeholders and you move forward with them. And definitely then resolve old difficult problems. I will tell you, well, at, at, at uh, Spread and at the Design Barn, we do a lot of beautiful work, very beautiful work in designing brands, experiences. Uh, but I'm going to really talk today to you about the tough work because somebody has got to do that tough work. So the tough work here in this case, for instance, was a challenge where the government of Karnataka had already built 70 lakh toilets and they'd spent the money, they'd built them, but nobody was using them because, well, there wasn't even a word or a term for going to the toilet. I mean, and that was, we found that out after a serious groundwork that the team did to understand what was required. And once we understood that, we realized that, you know, here's a scenario where there is no social media, there is no internet, very few people have smartphones, um, you can't do newspaper ads. How do you actually make change happen? So we said, why not start from the children? Why not start with the people for whom this change is important? And why not create a system? Why not create a movement? So we created this movement, which was called Swachame Vijayate, which is that um, it's only through cleanliness can we be victorious. And um, it was a whole lot of different efforts. So, and it also meant changing our attitude towards what had to be done. So some of the things you see here on the screen um, are about, you know, getting walls, designing graphics that would allow us to make the medium the message. So create these messages which would go up on the village walls, on school walls, outside the toilets, uh, create success stories where very few existed so that the deviation, some people using their toilets well became the norm. Use the idea of good morning messages and create little films use humor to take the message out there and work a lot with the people, work with the children who would take a daily pledge around cleanliness, create a song which was a one to 10 on cleanliness, um, create graphics that would go up in the schools, um, uh, create, um, uh, create plays, use the local artists, use local painters, use uh, local children, use local leaders, use local um, um, 
uh, politicians even whoever was needed and um the 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 workers working out there in the field who were really not doing enough became from swachagrahis to digital swachagrahis with their task being let's send a message out every day to remind people um uh, that they must they must contribute they must participate this is for them and finally we actually integrated we looked at the rituals we looked at celebrations and integrated this whole idea of uh, swachhata into the rituals into festivals into the culture so like i said you need to design act react you need to go put something out there see how it's working and you need to have a really open attitude you need to put things on the ground and see how it works out so i'm going to show you some stuff so this is the children taking a pledge owning the movement us giving it away to them these are some of the beautiful graphics we made and uh, um a funny story is we went and presented this it was all approved finally after much back and forth about what works what doesn't work how to communicate it etc 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 and while the team was thinking about and was excited about the many lakhs of walls where this would go up um is when um, the principal secretary said hmm, uh, you think we can let the local painters take this up i was like shit this is it this is the solution we want why don't we just give it away when we give it away we get so many walls and so many interpretations of this idea and you know what these people start to own those walls and they look after them you know and this goes across the state at at an incredible scale and we see change and we watch it and we grow it and we nurture it and we keep responding to it it's not a one time thing we can't give up we have to be resilient these are some of the animations that suggest to people that you know don't go outside by lali beda don't go outside because that's that's all they say for going to the toilet because a snake may come come and bite your bum a monkey may take away your lota uh, a daughter tells her father don't go outside and perpetually keep putting the message out you know and uh, and and don't do it as a one time effort and keep monitoring the results this is students these are some of the plays these are this is the the swachharatas going out um and performing uh, none of us are really experts at uh, any of this but we are experts at designing systems we are experts at being optimistic we are experts at being resilient another opportunity that we had was to work with the karnataka agriculture ministry to uh, create or what we thought we should do is create a movement to connect the market to the farmers uh, the especially the subsistence farmers the lowest level of farmers uh, where there is the greatest rate of farmer suicides because uh, you know uh, because of drought the ministers actually suggested the karnataka agriculture minister some of you may know about know his name krishna bairagoda who is really somebody with seriously great intent Uh, who had suggested to the sub the subsistence farmers that they grow millets because millets are and and, and organics because organics are uh, have greater market realization value realization and millets are naturally organic and climate smart so you would think that you know you tell people oh you know farmers are committing suicide and uh, uh, people would i think that's a great reason to buy millets but we turn away from anything negative as human beings and that's a little bit sad about us but so you need to create a new argument so we said first of all we said let's mill it we created a movement which is let's mill it and we had um, a lot of influencers who got invited to a millet meal uh, and then we had all these scripts about the 100 reasons why you should have millets and since we were giving them a free meal we said okay can we record a video with you um and um, Uh, and they would say you know what uh, millets are good for you for this 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 reason let's mill it and suddenly there were all these people who were saying let's mill it and we created this form more people felt oh my god what's going on why don't i know what's millets why should i be part of this and i had people calling me as well from places like bombay delhi saying there's something happening happening in karnataka around millets what exactly is it what are millets and uh, 
we framed it as um, good for your health, good for the planet, and good for the farmer. And we framed it, framed millets as next gen smart food. Um, and really, what happened was, um, and the physical initiative involved not just a campaign, but it, it involved training of farmers, it involved uh, um, uh, one uh, national fair, an international fair, and a second international fair to reach up to a point where the UN started to recognize uh, the, the power of millets um, and declare 2023 as the International Year of Millets. Um, and uh, the farmers learned across those three fairs to actually meet uh, in business lounges at the fair um, uh, housewives learned how to uh, create a product, create an industry, hire their own husbands to run some of this. Um, and uh, many, many brands were created. The figures are in front of you. Um, and so um, this was something we felt that, I mean, we were doing something tangible, trying to design a movement. Of course, there's a product, there is packaging, there is a fair, there is there is an exhibition and there is all of that, but more than that, you're designing a movement to change something that needs fundamental change. So, uh, so you would think, okay, we do all of this really hardworking work, you know, and uh, um, I want to do that kind of work, but maybe um, sometimes, how do you bring it together with beautiful work? Because that's what we as designers love to do. Um, so this is work from our portfolio that, uh, uh, personally, I'm very proud of and uh, has also resulted in a very beautiful assignment we're working on now where we're designing the branding and the and the passenger experience for the new Goa airport, which is coming up, the international airport that's coming up now. Um, and um, uh, here the opportunity was that, I mean, we're not a McKinsey, we're not an ENY, but we have a lot of common sense and we have a lot of good intention. And so when the Kochi International Airport approached us to do a logo, they saw our work as designers, as people who do logos, right? So to do the logo, we found out what they were doing and realized that while they were doing a lot of work around culture, around history, they were also doing a lot of work uh, around greening. And Kochi being a very important uh, destination to get into India, we felt that here's an opportunity that although it's a low-rise airport, it can do something remarkable, something that the world takes note of. And we proposed to them to consider being the world's first green port. And they said, but what about what we do with culture? What about the other stuff? We said, don't worry. We'll bring that alive in your logo. You know, we'll make it a logo that people love and feel for. And culture, history, all of that will come out in it. Um, and uh, why it's also my personal favorite is the day they set up a Facebook page and this logo was put out, um, a friend of mine from Dubai sent it to me saying, hey, since you like branding, you just may love this work. I thought it was remarkable. So it touched people. It touched the hearts of the person coming back into Kerala, uh, visitors coming in. So yes, work can be, and that's the power of design, right? We can do things which are powerful and which are beautiful. You know, and we and and also make change happen. So we were together in the room, I would see your expression and I would know what you think, but right now I don't, so I would just go on. So we do 
branding. We do a lot of work in branding. We do a lot of work in design for behavior change and uh, work like that. But during the pandemic, um, one of our clients sort of challenged us where uh, while they have a pretty large innovation center um, and they love to get their clients over there during the pandemic, they couldn't do that. So they challenged us saying that, can you help us create a digital space, which is not just a digital twin um, of what we have, but something which is creatively something else altogether. And, uh, uh, and we were talking about sustainability in this space. And the idea was to talk about sustainability. The idea was to talk about the circular economy and AI and uh, amazing technology. Um, so we said, you know, um, and I'd, I'd ask you also to think about that. So uh, we, we said, while we did not know how to build something like this at that time, when we storyboarded it, we looked at how might we do something which is not your usual stuff. And so what the metaverse or the digital spaces allow you to do is say walk on water. There is no gravity there. There are things you can do and imagine which don't exist in real life. So we took our inspiration from Bali as one of the places. We looked at you know, having a, a lily pad as a roof. We looked at your know, being able to walk on water and various other such things to create a space which really challenges your imagination. And once we did that, we realized oh, nobody was willing to build it. So then we figured that we need to learn how to build it. We didn't feel that we should say we don't know how to do this, but it's something you learn along the way. In today's environment as designers, there's all of this amazing technology. How can we not embrace it? How can we not bring our imagination and our creative chops to it? So we went ahead and did that. And since then, we started to build these metaverse spaces. And now we've, we've designed over a half a dozen of these spaces, which we never did before. So, you know, you, you design, you act, and you react. And fundamentally, why? Because um, as Buckminster Fuller said, you know, there is only one revolution tolerable to all men, all societies, all political systems, revolution by design and image. That's how you change things in a very positive, very beautiful way. Um, and in my own experience, again, I talked to my own experience um, between Professor Carlos Teixeira from Brazil um, and me. We looked at, um, he was at Parsons School of Design and I was part of a design firm. And we looked at, you know, where does design really start from? Um, and can we challenge that? For emerging nations, can we look at things differently? Do we have to accept an answer? Can there be another answer? So we looked at reframing and we looked at creating a whole project. So it was action. It wasn't, we never wrote a book about it to this day. But we looked at a project where we took a lot of people along, students, leaders, many other people to say, what happens if we shift the focus of design from needs to dreams? You know, and that project, we never we never entered it for any awards, but it got recognized as a global game changer in the design space with universities in Brazil, uh, in China, um, in, Amer in America, actually saying, you know, this is a way of thinking and a toolkit that maybe we need to, um, uh, maybe we need to look at. You know, as it is, uh, Victor Papanek had said that, you know, designers look at a very small share of real problems. That's what we need to fundamentally change. And what the Dreamin project did was say, you know, rather than from top down looking at people's needs, can we create a bottom up movement where it's about people and their dreams and their focus on those dreams to create a dynamic, progressive and fearless society. So that's what I was thinking about 10 years ago. And while doing that, it taught me to dream big and to do bold things. Um, and... Um, and the project had an impact all over the world, although there was no sponsorship. It was just people coming together, working together, dreaming with their feet. Paul Polak said that to me. What I like about your project is that people are dreaming with their feet. You dream with your feet. You don't just imagine things. You have your head in the clouds, but you have your feet firmly planted on the ground and you move forward like that. And these days I'm thinking a lot about, and this again, when we meet, I would like to discuss more with you about 
when when we talk so much about human centered design are we being a little bit selfish how can we open up and talk a little bit more about life oriented design which includes all life you know maybe maybe when we are too selfish we we have things like the pandemic can we change our outlook a little bit and why not you know and so we've created a model which we call the design sense model which allows you to act it's just a toolkit and frameworks that allow you to act from a place of authentic intent intensity intention to go and act creatively again and again and again to go from a place of sense making to giving new sense to things to be able to feel feel think and do so that's the model and that's the the path this is a path it has metrics you can evaluate any project with those metrics we look at um, taking things from design innovation culture entrepreneurship all of these subjects we've created our own entire program around this um that we share and we use that to be able to sense the shifts to allow us to be far more sensitive not just empathetic to be sensible to be to do things which are sensorial and therefore change you to be sensational to explore possibilities and redesign the entire human experience um so and then i'm coming back to where i started from which is the idea of the dare and so all of this to be able to take it forward quickly we have what we call the dares you take up a challenge you know don't just take up a problem take up a dare solve something big so these are some of the dares that uh, dare fellows at the design barn have taken up which is for amazon for microsoft for B for the bangalore international airport uh, for the government um and we are getting ready to take up yet another dare which is to see that bangalore why do we have all of these problems in bangalore of flooding um of uh, various other issues like of traffic of um um of people not being able to cross the road you know us us not being able to enjoy the outside uh, why is bangalore becoming a victim of its own growth can we to come together as change makers to actually do something to debug bangalore so uh, and i invite you to come there with us george is the person to get in touch he's a lot of fun you'll enjoy meeting him get in touch with us um because um i know you'll say it's not i mean you can uh, it's not possible i mean a lot of people will tell us that no it's not possible i mean this is growth this just happens but um um this is what i hum to myself and i want to leave for you it's a line from some of you will know again we are not here so i can't ask you but uh, it's a it's a song from sting where he says to search for perfection is all very well but to look for heaven is to live here in hell so there's a duality there i'm not saying don't be a perfectionist but don't don't let it stress you out you know i'd still say dare you know um be ready all the time to design to act and to react thank you thank you so much sonia for that amazing talk let's dare to dream and disrupt we couldn't have asked for a better way to open the second half thank you uh i can see some questions from the audience um we have time for one um okay. the question is um, a lot of us have this preconceived notion that working with the government public sector is difficult how has your experience been um you know you'd be surprised they work harder than most of us they are more intentional than first of us that, that most of us that's why they're there so there are enough change makers there and work with the change makers you'll know uh, if you don't go meet them if you don't date them how will you know so you go date them and if they have real intention work with them i we have found that uh, there are people with serious intent they work harder than most people in in the private space um and there is far less corruption even so we have a lot of these preconceived notions we can shed them only if we go out and explore thank you sonia for answering that question and it was great pleasure hosting you at design days today most welcome